one man, 11 women who make everyone else deal with their bad mood and then call it being hangry instead of apologizing. Let's do it! Open with major tension in the house. Maria and Sydney are arguing. We don't know why anymore. She's like, did I say she looks dumb? Of course. Did I tell her her tattoos make her look like she had a bad ayahuasca trip? Yes. Am I a bully? Uh-uh. I am team Maria in this argument, but we do have to admit she does dress like she's the evil person in the rom-com. Nothing about this outfit, black turtleneck, tight pony, pleated skirt, says girl next door who doesn't know how to get out of her own way to go on a date. Finding out where they're going on their trip. International, they're like, please don't be Ottawa. Please don't be Edmonton. Where are we going? Malta. They're like, I love Alta. Oh my God, I get my makeup there. It's cheaper than Sephora. Wait a minute. You need a passport to go to Alta? Look, they don't even know where they're going and they're cheering. Point it out on a map. They're like, oh, okay, Malta. Oh yeah, 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 not Alta. So we are in Malta. And Joey, who always seems like he's on a 15 milligram gummy, he's like, it's got that old school vibe. I don't know what it is. Man, they must have built it in the 80s. Now, the women come walking through Malta looking like the most pickpocketable tourists you've ever seen. Like, if I'm a pickpocket, I'm going up to the women, skipping and holding hands and just talking them up until their passport and all their cash is in my pocket. They'll give it to me. They'll probably hand it to me. Oh, yeah, 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 hold it. On the road again. I'm telling funnies on the road again. That's right. I'm in all these cities. Assemble the group chat. Get them all together. It's the family business tour. I got great shows. The act is ready. It's ready for you guys to come out, laugh, cry. Tell a friend. There it is. Here, here are the cities. Here are the cities. Here are the cities. New York. Um, I didn't think this was going to happen. That second show is going to sell out. So... And Toronto, second show. I added it. The first one sold out in like seven seconds, and then now I have the second show just sitting there. So come on, get the ticket. I love when they show up to the hotel and it looks like a meeting room in a Hilton in Cleveland. And they're like, look at it. They're like, oh my God, look at it. It's a room. There's a tub in the living room. That's the height of luxury. Look at it. She's like, a hallway? Oh my God, you guys aren't going to believe it. There's moisturizer in the bathroom. They just give it to you. Lexi gets the one-on-one -on -one and she asks him what he likes to do when he travels. This would be an answer that would make me unattractive. I'd be like, I like to not go to a museum, not meet the people, not see the culture, and then go to the beach and complain about the hotel and the menu. This is my favorite part of The Bachelor is when they meet randos in other countries. Oh, this would be a problem for me. I'd be like, uh, a pastry in the morning? What do I look like, an animal? She'd be like, no, don't worry, you walk a lot, and we don't put poison in our foods like you do in America. She asks if they're married. Uh, no, but we might be in like two weeks, even though we met 15 minutes ago. She's like, oh, you're lovers. Look, at now she's into it. He's like, now that I know you're lovers, I run a sex group under one of the old bridges called Malta Madness. Fingers everywhere. Yes, I bring the pastries with me and I rub them against my nipples. It's a lot of fun. No judgments. Come on down. They go and play bocce. I love that they get them involved with people that like to show us like, oh, they're in the culture. Like they had to go up to this old man and be like, hey man, you look close to dead. So you'll remind the audience of how lucky they are. Can you come play bocce with us? And now they find another guy who's old to play the ukulele. And I don't know if that's a song or just him repeating himself. And they're like, yeah, let's do the Maltese horror. Jews do this after they break a glass. Not exactly a nightclub. I can't think of something I would want to do less on vacation than sit in an empty church and stare at it. I'd be like, the weather is gorgeous today. Have you seen the beaches? We should be having margaritas. What are we doing here? I've seen it. 
Okay, I found the one thing worse than sitting in an empty church when it's gorgeous out on vacation. Having to talk to the priest. What's he going to talk to them about? Like, what do you think? He's a good, he's one of the good ones. Oh, I just want to tell you, do not have sex before marriage or you'll go to hell. The priest just said he's not one to judge. Oh, I'm one of those cool priests. Yeah, don't worry about me. I let all the gay marriage happen here. They come in. We don't even have to make them wear a suit. They wear assless chaps. It's totally fine. I'm a cool priest. They bow their heads and do a little prayer. I don't even know what I would be doing right now. Like, if I was Joey, I'd be staring at the ground being like, one, two, three, four. Is that long enough? Is that like... The length a heartfelt wish to God would take. Priest David, you brought this bachelor atrocity into my domain. Sure, you got the extra money from ABC, but this is my summer home, my Maltese summer home. How could you? You shall burn for this. They read the group date card and they realize that Maria and Sydney are going to have a two-on-one date and they can't stand each other. Oh, we're going to get a showdown. The madness in Malta. The Maltese mayhem. It's coming. The Saturday night paper. So now they start arguing before the date even starts. Sydney's the worst type of person. She is literally mad at Maria for being catty towards another woman. She doesn't even remember what this fight was all about. She is one of the people that ends up in those Karen videos. When I'm sitting next to somebody that literally has zero respect. She uses these buzzy words. She's like, okay, I, my mental health is being affected. And I see a therapist once a year. And they told me to stay away from high sugar, uh, fructose. Um, I'm intolerant to bread. And this will mess with my glycemic index. Okay, you, this is a serious thing. Now we're at the nighttime portion of the day. Joey coming in hot in a salmon jacket, looking very much like he gives money to his former fraternity. Cue your friend from the mid-Atlantic region who played a little bit of lacrosse in high school. Is like, oh my God, I got the same jacket. Yeah, picked it up at Brooks Bros. Yeah, on sale. Still expensive, though. Joey's really good at being on the show. Watch how he plays this. He has no idea what she's talking about, but he's going to look caring. Figure out what's going on. You ready? And I find out that I'm diagnosed with stage five endometriosis. He doesn't know what that means, but look at I don't know if you know crushed what it. Is. I don't. He's like, no, I don't. But it's a long word, and you seem pretty serious about it. So I'm just gonna keep staring now. So we're here in Malta for the group date. There's gonna be some sort of Game of Thrones challenge, and I don't want to out your boyfriend, but if you're watching with him, this is where his eyes are right now. I just want to thank Edwina for not you know, following the crowd and going with this jeans and a t-shirt look. Thank you for, you know, going outside the lines a little bit. For the boyfriends out there who are zoning in directly to your tuchus. They come up here to this sword fight and here's who's going to train them to battle. This guy who looks like he carries a PBS tote bag. Another guy who looks like he runs a Reddit thread about WWE wrestling. And a woman who looks like she knits every Sunday with a group of women and talk about their cats. She does her blog right now. Women can be nice too. Women can be nice too. We can also pay for the date after he is paid four to five times. And we will pump fake towards our purse until that time. They put them all in costumes and I love The Bachelor because they make no attempt to not sexualize The Bachelor. Like if this were me, I would be wearing that metal sheath thing around my stomach like a crop top. I'd be like, no, 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 I, I'm more comfortable with it here. I know it's supposed to go around the neck, but I think it looks better, you know, right from my nipples down to my navel. That I'm gonna cover up a little. They say it's really important to have a soul as a knight, and they have to just come up and stare into his eyes and show him their soul. Look at this guy is in the background just thinking of a sandwich he has in the fridge. He's like, Ah, when is this going to end? I got a prosciutto just waiting. Now they're going to play this game where they have to catch sausages in their mouth. And it's a little ridiculous. It feels like one of the knights that's training them came up with this because it's his kink. Like, it feels like this guy was like, 
No, it's okay. I just, I will be taping from afar because for my own records, we want to make sure we keep track of who caught sausages and who didn't. I mean, look at this. This is not what they did to train to become knights. This is not, this is a producer who has gone rogue, who has been dreaming of this moment for like 20 years and he got the chance to write a segment. And they're like, wait, wait, you want to put sausages on a wheel and make the women catch it in their mouth? What's? He's like, yeah, no, 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 they did it in Malta. I swear, I, I, I'm telling you. And I know there's a lot of innuendo, but none of this is sexual to me. I mean, you'd have to be a weird dude. I mean, like, maybe it's sexual to this guy. Like, this is the only person who looks like they would like someone biting the side of a sausage and think it's sexual. Yeah, it's a little offensive. I'm an actor. I came to ABC thinking I was going to be taken seriously, and then I get, you know, put up on a wheel and told to dance around and have a bunch of women suck on me. They didn't even suck. It was teethy. And that's a message to their future boyfriends. They should know this. There's something very specific happening on this group date. They're all starting to see who has real connections with him and who's falling behind. And you can tell they all like him. Like, he might be the most liked Bachelor that I've ever seen on this show. So the day card comes and their worst nightmare comes true. It's a two-on-one date. And now it's like a weigh-in for a prize fight. Maria versus Sydney. Sydney versus Maria. Delusional versus bitch. Like, Sydney literally looks like she's like, oh my God. Okay. Is there a PTA meeting I can attend to complain about this? The competition is getting so wild that Jess just said to Joey that she's falling for him. That stuff that's said on like the second to last episode, she's like, you know, we didn't talk today, but when I was trying to eat that sausage with no hands, I could feel something between us. We're heading to the two-on-one date, and it's Maria versus Sydney. Um, which one would you choose? The one who keeps talking about her mental health, about an argument that she started, or hottie in the body con dress? Uh, yeah, that's my... I mean, they couldn't be dressed more for their personality types. This is, I didn't get vaccinated because it might mess with my crystals. And this is high school bully who's now really nice to you on Facebook and says a lot of things like, oh, you're wearing that? I can't imagine a more awkward scenario than being stuck with someone I hate on the front of a boat. If this were me, I'd probably fart and take the chance that the boat was loud enough to cover up my fart. And then if they heard it, I would look around like a bird flew by. Joey is explaining why this date is necessary and it couldn't come off as more crap. He's like, no, this is necessary. These two are people I could see a future with. So let's get them on a boat in the middle of the sea and have them duke it out in bikinis. This is so uncomfortable. She keeps calling it torture. I mean, the minute you call this torture, being at the Blue Grotto in Malta, is the minute I'm like, okay, maybe you're not going to be a reasonable partner. Sydney's literally complaining on this boat. She's like, as long as we're not going to go into something really small, it's like, this is, Joey, Joey, get another boat over here, get her out of here. This is, as long as we're not going into something really small, I get claustrophobic and it affects my glycemia. I'm Maria. I just start having a date with him. Stop talking about it. Let's talk about us. Let's talk about how I wore this neon dress that literally points to my titties. Let's talk about that. That's what I would do. Get off of Sydney. She's not worth the time. So they come back to this battle bench, and Sydney's tone is just so annoying. She talks to her like she's. A mom who's judging another mom for putting sugar in the cupcakes she brought in to the school for the birthday party. Maria continues to get dressed for battle. I mean, Maria, my God. She's coming in that, and Sydney's probably going to come in a all-natural schmata. 
that's made with like hemp seed. And here comes Sydney to the two on one. The battle continues. I've never sat amongst someone I hated so much for as long as they've sat together. I mean, at this point, one of the, I'd be like, I'm leaving. This is going so long that you're trying to make us literally hit each other. Joey says that there's no way he's going to figure out the truth. So then he's like, I'm just going to figure out who I have the best connection with. Whoever stays, we win because they're both just unhinged at this point. And I'm, I'm excited for both of their futures on the show. Honestly, I wish they could both stay and just argue for the rest of the show. I mean, look at that stare. That is, I am going to get some books banned at the school stare. Okay, so a rose is about to be given out. I just have to ask, Again, what to are they eating? Explain. What is this on the table? I'll take the large pile of poop with an onion ring on top, please. This isn't even a decision. He's like, Maria, we made out and then you change clothing to wear less clothing. Sydney, you've been miserable since the minute you got here. You've complained. And you really generally are off-putting. So this is tough for me. So Joey lets Sydney leave. Look at even as she's leaving, she's miserable. Yeah, I just hope that you, you know, conscious of your decision. I mean, look at that. That face. That that moment, I'd be like, whoo! I dodged a bullet. I mean, I just hope you're conscious of your decision. I mean, that face should be put on her dating app as a warning to the other men out there. And then Sydney leaves, she walks down Kidnapper's Alley to be met at the end by the henchman from a Taken movie. And Maria and her low cut dress get the rose and she wins, she takes down evil Sydney and they make out. This is a win for all the boyfriends. We get more of Maria's bodycon dresses. And suddenly, Ave Maria is being sung. Look at, she's like, Ave Maria. She's less annoying than Sydney. And her tits are out all the time. And the luggage awaits. And here comes the producer who didn't really bother getting out of his PJs to come into the room. And he takes Sydney's bag away. And shock and awe comes over the ladies. They're like, what? The most annoying woman we've ever met got kicked off of the dating show? You can what? You can tell they all really like Joey because during the cocktail hour, like every woman came to him like he was the godfather on the day of his daughter's wedding. Like, I just want to let you know that I like you more than I liked you as yesterday. And if you're ever thinking of um, showing your feelings to someone, I am someone who has feelings too. Now Leia is mad that some of the women aren't more upset that Sydney left. It's a crazy thing to create drama about. And then she pulls Medina aside. She's like, I just want to let you know that I'm upset that you weren't more upset that another woman you were competing with for another man was sent home. I couldn't be more on M Medina's side on this one. Perspectives are completely different than, you know, what I would perspectivize in this situation. Perspectivize? Are we making up words? What is going on? Is that a word? Martina's perspectives are completely different than, you know, what I would perspectivize in this I'm, I need to look up that word. I, I don't even understand. Perspectivize? Leah created something out of such nothing and then told her that her morals and values were different than Medina. If I were Medina, I would take that death stare and try and shoot lasers out of my eyes through Leah after that conversation. Maria finds a new enemy in Leah, and that's it for The Bachelor. And that's it for me. I will be back tomorrow with more of The Bachelor. Share my feed post. Share, share, share.